Well, hello and welcome to the show. Glad you've joined us this week. I very rarely get to hold hands with my guests, but today I have my wife out here helping me make this show and we are gonna have a ton of fun. We're talking about rollbacks. We're gonna help Dee Dee understand leg positioning, timing, hand positioning. All of that's coming up right here on Discovering the Horseman Within. Gonna take a ride on one true Where we want to start, Didi, I want to start talking just about leg positioning. And you've heard me go over this a bunch, but for the for the benefit of the audience, I'm going to go over it with you again, because <laughs> I might have forgot. <laughs> That's Good. what I was trying to find a nice way to say. Okay, so when I talk about position one, I want to turn my toes out and reach in with my spur, and I want to be reaching into that front cinch region. Okay. And that's gonna help motivate my horse's front end and pick his front end up and move it around and direct it, okay? Position two is directly underneath of you, and that's your rib cage control. That's gonna move your rib cage left and right. Position three, which we really won't be using very much today, is back here by the back cinch, and that's gonna move the hindquarters. We're gonna predominantly focus on positions one and two. Now, what you just did, I see thousands of people do this, there is actually, unless you are a saddle bronc rider, there is never any reason to be reaching your spur up here into the shoulder. Okay. All you're gonna do is get your horse bracy and stiff. So really you're gonna turn your toe out and just slide your leg forward where it's comfortable. Right, cause I feel like when my feet came forward, mm -hmm. I had to tighten this, everything just went tight to get them. If it doesn't the... hurt, you're probably not doing it right. It's not going to be super comfortable. And again, what you try to do is take both feet there at once. Right. You're not going to do that. You're going to take one foot there. Oh. One foot at a time. Okay. You don't, you, there's, again, very rarely do you need to go like this with both feet. Okay? So you're going to reach up here. And, and you're not reaching way up here and stabbing on him. You're just turning your toe out, sliding your leg forward naturally and comfortably, and moving that horse's body. Okay? So positions one, two, and three change for everybody. I try to get pretty close to the cinch. Sometimes I see people whose positions one, two, and three are all the way back by the back cinch and they're very slightly forward of that. As long as you are consistent, I don't think it really matters where you put it. For me, I like things forward. It keeps my balance. It keeps my toes underneath of me. I want to ride here. When my feet start slipping back, my shoulders start slipping forward. Particularly in a rollback, that's going to get you in trouble. Okay? You want to sit here where you can be in the middle of this horse and when you start putting him on cattle and he starts moving quicker, you want to be right in the middle of him where you can make the ride. Okay. All right. So you got your leg position down. What I want you to do is just watch me here. I'm going to ride this circle and just a nice 20 to 30 foot circle and frame your horse up nice. The rollback is one exercise where I let them come out of the frame as they come out of the rollback. They need to stretch out to go. A rollback done correctly is really a 180 and we stop going one direction and begin going the other direction. My inside the circle leg is in position two. My outside the circle leg is in position one. Position two is keeping the horse's rib cage arced. I take position two off and just let that position one leg bring that horse around. Okay? You don't want to have a sudden stab motion because if you do, your horse is going to get real bracy and high-headed. So now I've got my inside leg, which it, if I was working cattle, this would be my cow side leg. My cow side leg is in position two, holding the arc on this horse. Okay. My outside or herd side leg is in position one. My cow side leg comes off. My outside leg moves that horse through. Okay. My hands don't really have to do very much. I do not want to pull my horse's nose. No matter how big a hurry you're in, if you start pulling your horse's nose, everything gets ugly. That was mean. It was terrible, wasn't it? Okay. All right, go ahead and put yourself wait, on wait. this circle. Wait, so I, I only got the legs. I didn't pay attention to your hands. So what you didn't did pay your, attention to what? What did your hands, hands do? My hands didn't do anything. Okay. Do, my just inside do it rein again. just maybe lifted. 
the tiniest amount, but really, my reins do two different things. My okay. inside rein controls direction. Okay. My outside rein controls leg speed. So if I took my inside leg off and my horse didn't turn, okay? Okay. If I took this leg off and she kept walking forward and I put my outside leg on and she didn't turn, then that rein would stop her from going forward. But if she's, if she's riding correctly, I'm gonna ride up here nice and soft and make that directional change. My hands are gonna move a half of an inch, maybe. So the outside rein does the neck rein? The neck rein is barely touching the horse's neck. You are not you really going want like this all move, of a sudden. Right, you really the want her to move off the, the leg. The movement's off your legs. Okay. The more you pull on your horse's face, the more you break down their level of communication. Okay, so I'm gonna pull the leg off and then let her... Uh, and don't feel like you have to way exaggerate pulling this leg off. Just lift that spur off a little bit. Eyes up, looking where you're going. Keep your circle. That inside leg is critical. It's making the circle. Inside leg is critical. It keeps that horse arced and bent, so it's in position two. Now, if you feel like you're horse is trotting without you asking, then you're using a little bit more spur than you probably needed. Okay. Yeah, I... Okay. Now, see where your hands are? Yeah, they were pretty high. You, yeah, they, they weren't just high. They okay. were leaving the country. <laughs> okay. Right. So your hands weren't just here, but they were back here, and this is pushing you completely out of position. Okay. Okay. So when your hands start doing this, it makes it hard for you to ride. So I want you to get those hands down here where they belong, down around the saddle horn, nice and soft and comfortable. And then you might lift your inside rein just a little bit and let that leg push that horse around there. Okay, so here okay. I come. Here I come. I think my horse is in a good position. I'm gonna okay. take my leg off. He was actually going to go if okay, I would. Now, reach. So let's work on your leg for a minute. Okay. What I want you to do is I want you to do several things at once here. You take your hands and you start drifting them across his neck. You don't need to do that. Okay. You are not actually reaching your spur forward. You're leaving your spur in position three. I want you to reach forward to position two, or position one rather, and move this horse's shoulders around. Okay. Okay. So hands stay the same. Okay. And then what you're doing is you're coming up here and you're taking your inside leg off and stopping, then trying to make the roll back. Okay, I want it all one piece. There you go, there you go. Now when that horse is walking forward like that, you needed more outside rein. Okay, so we're not, right now we're using almost a pivot or a 360. We're not getting much roll back into this, but we're gonna get the pieces drilled into what you're doing. Okay. Off, over, how's that? That was way better. That was drastically improved. Now show me the other side. Well, One of the things I love about Deuce is that for a six-year-old horse, he has a 10-year-old mentality of knowing exactly where his rider wants to be and being there. He's not in a hurry. He'll, he'll liven up, he'll come down. I love that in a horse. You know, the most important three things in, in looking for a horse are disposition, disposition, disposition. Now reach further forward with that spur. No, that's backwards. Reach Wait. further forward. Turn your toe out. Okay. Reach forward. Turn your toe out and reach forward. Okay. Like that? No, reach like this. There, like that. Get that spur up there where it can do you some good. You turn those toes out and push those heels down. This is like going back to third grade ballet. Okay? So, by the way, I wasn't in third grade ballet, but anyhow. Turn those toes out. Push that heel forward. Okay. Now your hands are should up here again. Should have slid up the reins. Your I should have slid here. them up low the reins. Low and slow. Low and slow. Get those hands down here where they belong. Okay. Your horse cannot perform any better until you let him. Okay? Okay. When you're getting in his way, he can't perform any better. He's trying. 
but that's the best he can do is try. Okay, hold up. I want to work on your hands positioning a little bit more. And we're going to do that right after this. So what I want you to do is the, almost the exact same exercise, except instead of turning to the inside, I want you to turn to the outside of the circle, which is really what a rollback is. So you're going to come in. When I'm thinking about working cattle, I always think about the cow being inside the arc, okay? But when I think about rolling back any place else, I always think about rolling back against the fence. So I want to come up here. I want to take my horse tipper nose to the outside, stop, drive that front end around, and ride off. And I want to excel out of that stop. So as I come around here, I'm going to arc her to the inside of the circle, drive that front end around, and ride off. Get that horse moving forward, slow back down, ride in here, shape her to the outside, stop, roll back, and ride off. Okay, does that make sense? That makes sense. Put a little more energy into it. Okay. Wake him up, pick that front end up. 180s, not 360s, and get that front end moving. There you go. Way better. Okay, all of a sudden your leg positioning and your hand positioning is way better. And I, I was gonna mention it and I didn't even mention it to you during the commercial break and you're, you're looking way, way better. Whoa, don't get those hands up. There you go. I love it. Your inside shoulder was up. You looked where you wanted to go. Drive off, fix that lead. There you go. Okay. Now flex him to the outside, get him ready to make that directional transition. Now drive, drive, drive. Okay, slow him down, fix that lead. When you come around to the inside, you want to be opening up that inside direction, opening your leg and lifting your shoulder a little bit and let him go that way. Drive, lift and drive. There you go, there you go. And don't smile because it's not fun. <laughs> There you go, right? Lift and drive. There. Now, now you're actually relaxing. The camera's no longer bothering you, bothering you and you're having fun, right? And your horse is riding a little bit better. I like the first exercise we did. It helps set up Whoops. what you're doing. Oh Whoops. yeah. Whoops. Whoops. <laughs> yeah. He got a little anticipation going there. Your hands got a little high. Fix that, slow it back down. Bring that front end around. Now drive out. Right there. Even okay. though it wasn't Not the... too much back up in the rollback. You want more forward. You don't want him to just make a rounded corner. You want nice square corners. By that, I mean you don't want his hind end just following his nose around. Right here, he's camped on his hocks and moving off. Get him on the correct lead. Slow him down, fix it. Okay, okay. elevate that. There you go. Now, right uh, there, he almost wanted tell. to make a rounded corner. His right, hind end I came forward. Tell. Yeah. Slow it down just a little bit and use that outside rein and stop that forward movement. I want those hocks to stay sharp and clean. Yep. How's now that? drive. There you go. Perfect. You relaxed, drove out of there. That's perfect. Now, rollbacks are a funny thing. If you do too much of them, a horse gets tired and he starts to get sloppy. You want to do only enough to start feeling good improvement, and then you want to quit there. Okay, his right there. His head came up. His head came up. He got pretty jacked up. He started saying, hey, this is fun. Let's go faster. So re start putting him back to a pivot is one thing you can do, and, and that worked good. A lot of times what I would do there, Didi, is actually what? just stop him and let him set. Oh. Don't roll him back. Just lope him up there and stop him. And he's going to anticipate the rollback. Just stop and set. Let him set 10 seconds and then roll back. Fix that lead. Yep, let him set. Now pick him up and roll him back and go. More direction, more direction. I don't want him backing up. There you go. Lope. Nope, fix that lead. You're leaning. You're leaning the direction you want to go and that's cueing him for that outside lead. Both directions every time. There you go. 
you get excited about the rollback and you lean into it, and get when you do, ahead of him, you huh? get ahead of him. That's right. Good, good. So is this my new horse? <laughs> Christmas is coming up, I think. What do you guys think? <laughs> okay, so now I want to change your exercise. I noticed he didn't answer that question. I want you to work on doubling your horse a little bit. So when we go to work in cattle in the next couple of days, this is going to be a critical exercise. So you're, you're going to ride to the inside and your horse is looking the inside and I want you to imagine the cow is in there. You're going to stop off your outside rein, back this horse in a circle away from your inside leg. Then take the inside leg off and drive him around with that outside leg. Hey, that was cool. Yeah, it's a lot of fun too. <laughs> okay, and so again, I've got my cow inside the circle right here. Okay. My cow just stopped. The so I stop, back that circle, push that horse's hindquarters underneath, bring that front end around. So your wool back was to the inside towards the cow because you never... My wool back is to the inside towards the cow and now what we're doing your... is we're back in that circle and putting that hindquarters underneath of him. So when he shapes up here, moving back over there just a little bit, just give him time. Like when things like that happen, the worst thing you could do is get upset over it. She just got her feet tangled, wait on her a little bit. Move that hindquarters over there, bring the front end around. Okay? That looks really cool. I'm glad you're cool. doing it. <laughs> bring that circle back over here. Inside leg comes off, outside leg comes on. And this is where you'll see people get really confused because you forget which leg is which. Right, okay? I'm not sure I can do You're that. riding forward in one circle. You're riding forward into a right hand circle. You stop, you back your horse's hindquarters in a circle to the left without moving your hands. You keep the same arc and then you bring the front end around into that same direction. Okay. Okay. I think we'll try it. There you go. Back in that hind My quarters to the going right. This way. Yep. Yep. Get that hind quarters headed over to the right. There you go. But I'm gonna roll back that You're way. You're going that way. Well, he kind of knew that okay. because he kind of just was going to go. All right. Now, hold on a second. Okay. When you're backing up there, as you're backing, you're sitting kind of all cockeyed like this. And right. then you're trying to get back in position. Okay. Okay. When you're backing up, your, your leg is back in position three. You're moving the hindquarters over. But your seat, you should be ready to go when position three lets go and position one takes over. The horse should just come underneath of you and move. You don't want to be sitting eight different places. Right, okay. okay. There you go, push that hindquarters over. When you feel that hindquarters step back underneath of you, I don't want the front end, I don't want him pivoting on the front end. I want him just backing up nice and smooth. Keep everything pretty and nice. There, there you go. There you go, good, perfect, perfect. I would way rather have you do it in a slow controlled manner. Go ahead and stop right there. I would way rather have you do it in a slow controlled manner and get all the pieces right. And Didi made the same exact mistake that almost all of us make. We start having fun. Gosh, what a crime that is. We start having fun and we start getting excited about it. And you should have fun and you should get excited about it. But then you've got to stay focused. And as soon as you came back and focused, all of a sudden you slowed things down a little bit. And yeah, do slow down and he wasn't as responsive, but that's okay. You got the pieces put together, you got the movement made. This is a difficult, this piece right. is a I difficult I could tell exercise. when my hands got over here where I thought I needed to be guiding him, actually got in his way. And when my hands were over here, he actually, like, it worked. Right, then you keep you your hands could do it. right over top of that saddle horn. 
and let that horse come back. That way, when you make that change of directions, you're right there ready to ride through. Right. Good job. Thank you. This week, I want to talk to you for a minute about wisdom. Solomon was considered the wisest man ever in the world. And God offered him the opportunity to have anything he wanted, and Solomon asked for wisdom. And because of that, he was granted gifts and riches beyond belief. Wisdom, Proverbs tells us that we should seek out and search for wisdom daily. A good friend of mine told me one time, he said, Ken, good judgment comes from experience. And experience comes from bad judgment. Sometimes the only way to get that wisdom is through experience and to just get out there and try to do it. I, uh, I honestly ask God for wisdom. I try to ask daily because that is really the source of wisdom. It's where it comes from. You might say, really, wisdom might not be giving your wife a lesson on national television, right? But at the same time, if you know the situation you're getting into, you'll probably get by with it. And we did, we had a good time with it. <laughs> we did. So to me, I think wisdom is, it's a moving target. We never really achieve you never get to a spot where you are, wow, just the oh wise one. Of course not. It's, it's part of wisdom is realizing that we continue to learn. We continue to strive and we continue to achieve more and reach for a higher level. In horse training, a lot of times wisdom shows up in knowing when and where to stop. A lot of times wisdom shows up in knowing how much pressure is too much. And again, how do you learn that? You learn that over time. And I don't know any trainers who don't tell you that they have messed up good horses because they went too far and went too long. Rollbacks is a good one where that can happen. Use a little wisdom, quit early, reward often, and you'll have a ton of fun with them. We hope you've enjoyed this as much as we've enjoyed bringing it to you. And until next time, may, may God, God bless, bless the trails, trails you ride. Find out more about Ken McNabb horsemanship at KenMcNabb.com. That one true horse, the perfect partner built to ride. One true horse, a bond that cannot be denied. You would search forever just to have the chance to take a ride on one true horse. Get away from me. <laughs> <laughs>